to raise baritone, but I like to be called just baritone, okay? Which, when most of you meet me in a clinical setting, I should usually say, sounds just like marathon, but with a B. So, um, as uh, uh, stated, I'm a psychiatrist and psychogeriatrician with clinical interests really in the older person and changes to the brain as one gets on in years. But I'm also a psychiatrist, and so why have I come along today to talk to you? Well, there's a few reasons. One was I was the second choice because of my boss couldn't make it. <laughs> 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 so, so I'm, I'm trying to live up to expectations. Number two, um, you know, myself and my team that I work with at Kensington Centre and in Timaru Hospital, we see the see the worst of the worst cases with all sorts of substance use uh, and really I want to give you a few nuggets of information and then I'll quieten down. Um, I have personal and professional reasons uh, for wanting to uh, talk about this. Personal in the sense of, you know, this is my adopted country and I want to keep it really the way it is and the way it because this stuff are incredibly neurotoxic and they are just plain lethal. Um, Leo's covered things, but I just want to pick up a few points from what he said. Um, you know, these things are new, so we don't know, we don't have raw data that I can just tell you. But we know lots from cannabis, okay? So I will tell you about that. Tetrahydrocannabinol, which is the active ingredient in cannabis. <coughs> now, Leo mentioned that when uh, Professor Huffman uh, in introduced the synthetic cannabinoids, <coughs> um, they said they were twice as potent. But you know, it can vary anything from two times as potent to cannabis to up to 30 times or more. Thanks, Pat. 
Okay, so really 